mom. Appreciate that. All right. You want to turn me down? Turn me off there, brother. Brother Jack. Thank you, brother. Brother. No, not you. Him. <laughs> no, I need, I need you to turn me on, okay? All right. Brother Butler, would you open us up with prayer before we preach? Help us, Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank God that we're not being bombed and shot at this morning. Amen. People in the Ukraine are. And uh, pray for them. Um, most everybody gets their turn. You know, I've, I've said that for years, making hospital visits. You know, I always use the stairs. I try to, you know, get my walking in. So you go to Sacred Heart now, you park two miles away and walk to the hospital and climb stairs so you've got your exercise in. And I'm always thinking every hospital visit I make, my turn's coming. And it has, and, and it has. Everybody gets their turn sooner or later unless you die young. And so anyhow, always remember that your turn is coming. What I need this morning is a family that, will, that loves God. <laughs> That's a little of a blackmail note there, isn't it? A family that loves God. Preferably with a child that would, or children that would sit on the front row when I can preach to you this morning. Not, not, not directly at you, just somebody that would sit there this morning I could use as an example. Would anybody volunteer to be an example this morning? Not a bad example, I mean, not a bad example, just somebody that would be an example that I could, I could use for family. I could use your names. Look at here, man. Look at this. Look, that, praise the Lord. Here they come, man. Hey. Amen. We got two families. No, come on. We, two, we got two families coming. One on this side, one on that side. That's even better. Oh, praise the Lord, man. Amen. This is going to be fun. It may get a little rough there, Brother David, but it'll be fun. Brother, brother the Lord's. <laughs> well, that's the fun part. <laughs> oh, no, we'll, this will be good. This will be good. The Lord loves families. Amen. There, there is no question about that. The Lord loves families. Um, the first thing that God ever instituted on planet Earth was the family. The second thing, if I may call it, was the church. Now, the Bible talks about the, the church, old Israel being the church in the wilderness. The church, word church just means a gathering, and people gather together, assembly together for worship. And so the first thing we find, we find God instituting the family. Then we find worship instituted, all the way back with, with Adam's family. God giving them instructions, the, the sacrifice, where to sacrifice, how to sacrifice. Of course, Cain brought the wrong thing. Abel brought what God wanted. And so there we have, we have the family, we have the worship all the way back in the book of Genesis. Family and worship, family and worship, family and church, family and church, and the two cannot be divided. They can't be divided. The church needs the family. Churches are built on strong families. Strong families are built by strong churches. And so it's a, it, it's a, it's not just a catch-22, it's a needed 22 is what it, what it is. And so, and so family is something that God absolutely loves. There's so much in the family. 
I think the word family comes up 70-something times in the Bible. And uh, then God references the family. So, so in, in, in the Bible, the Bible tells us, gives instructions to husbands, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and, and gave himself for it. Now, that's, that's a big deal, and gave himself for it. So husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's a lot of love. Now, you may not feel that kind of love all the time, but, but real love is not what you feel. Real love is what you practice. And so here is God telling us, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. But, but then he tells the wives, he says the wives, submit yourselves therefore unto your own husbands. I know you all love for me to say that. You love that Bible verse. Submitting doesn't, doesn't mean obeying. Submitting literally means to find out what he likes and do it. And, and that's in every area of life. Your job is to be the help meet for him, to help him. And if anybody ever needed help, it's men. We're not real smart. We don't have it all together. Your elevators, whereas females' elevators generally go to the top floor, ours usually very seldom leave the basement. We need help. That is true. We, uh, we're rash. Most men, not all, some men and women have their roles reversed, and, and God seems to work that all out, but it's a general rule. Um, as a general rule, in the family, the man uh, thinks with his head and the woman thinks with her heart. Generally, not always. In most families, there is a, among couples, one will have a priest attribute and one will have a prophet attribute. As uh, far as me and Miss Tina go, you get around Miss Tina, Miss Tina would have all priestly um, attributes. I mean, she's, she's the one that's going to... Um, uh, mediate and help you. To give you an example of that, a prophet, I, I would be a prophet. So a, a, a prophet will go from God to you. He's going to speak for God. So I, I'm going to stand up here this morning. When I read the word of God, I'm speaking for God. This is God's word. It's coming through me. That's what a prophet did. In the Old Testament, he would give you prophecy. Sometimes they would be uh, immediate prophecy. Sometimes they would be futuristic. If I was preaching this morning on things that are coming, that would be futuristic prophecies. My point is that in every family, in every couple, almost every single time, one will be the prophet, one will be the priest. And so the priest, the prophet went from God to man, but the priest went from man to God. And so today, today we have these attributes. Not that that's their calling, but their attributes. So generally, in like in your family, one of you will be a priest attribute, one of you will be a prophet, and they work together. In your family, one priest, one, one prophet, and, and they work together. God loves the family, and so God makes the family to where it works as a unit. Now, what God wants the family to do is work smoothly. You understand smoothly. He wants it operating smoothly. Yeah, can everybody say that word? Because you're looking at me like you don't understand what I'm saying. Smoothly. So here we are. God wants us smooth going. God wants it like like grease upon gears, smooth. So he wants the husband loving his wife, and he wants the wife submitting to the husband. This is how it works. This is how it operates. Now, it's, it would be more important, listen to me, it would be more important for Mr. Barrett here to know that his daddy loves his mama than it would be for him to know that his daddy loves him. The greatest thing you'll ever do for a child is for that child to know their parents love each other. That's how they learn. Little old Mr. Barrett can, Brantley, they can fear you all day long. You be, be their, you not be their buddy, you not be their friend. But if they know that you love their mama, that gives them a sense of security. Does that make yeah. sense to you? Yeah. So this is the way it works. And, and what is happening today is everything in life in our society is going against the family. Satan's great job is to destroy the family. Strong families mean strong churches. Strong churches means the gospel goes out more. The gospel goes out, people come to Jesus, people get saved, and God's happy. And people are happy. I want you to take your Bibles this morning. We're going to go to John, Joshua chapter 7. Having, having realized now how much that God loves families, I want to show you what happened to a family that, that got out of the will of God. In, in Joshua chapter 7, we're going to start reading in verse number 20. 
he might come back. He, he, he might come back. In Joshua chapter 7, the children of Israel have gone to war. They have already seen the walls of Jericho come down. They have gone to, to, to fight um, Achor. And what has happened is, is that when, when they went into Jericho, God instructed them not to take one thing. Don't take anything. Everything in that city is cursed. Don't take it. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to obey God sometimes. And, and so in, instead of them doing everything God told them to do, there's this man by the name of Achan that just couldn't resist himself. And I want you to notice, remember how much God loves families. The Bible says in verse number 20, now Joshua has called these families forward and God's eventually told him who it was that, that, that took the things. In verse number 20, the Bible says, the Bible says, And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Now I want you to remember that when they went into battle against Achor, thousands were killed. God let them be defeated because somebody had gone in and taken what they should not have taken, which means this. My sin and your sin is not just yours. It affects everybody. My disobedience affects you. Your disobedience affects me. The Bible says when one member of the body suffers, we all suffer. doesn't say we feel it, but we suffer still. And then, so he says in verse 21, When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Now here's something fascinating. First thing he says was, I saw it. He saw it. Now, now had he closed his eyes? But we don't do that, do we? When we see what we like, we keep on looking at it. And we look 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 until something triggers in our brain and then we begin to do something else. We begin to covet it. I want that. I want him. I want her. I want it. I want it. I want it. So he began to covet it. What he should have done there was run. Run. Now stop and think about you in your own life. If you've lived long enough, there are times that you did the same thing. You saw it and then you wanted it. You coveted it. Hopefully you ran. Right then you ran. That's what the Apostle Paul says to do. You run. Because if you don't run, what's going to happen is you are going to take what you covet. And so then he says, I took them. And then he hid them. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, listen to this, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? Remember, Thousands died because of this. Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the valley of Achor unto this day. It's a scary story that here is God. Now, I, I do realize this, that some people think the God of the Old Testament is not still the God of the New Testament. I have news for you, God never changed. God still feels about things now the way he did back then. God has not changed. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only good news for us in this story is somebody went to the cross and paid our sin debt. Amen. The reason we're not being stoned and we're not being burned today is because somebody went to Calvary and nailed the, the penalties against us to his cross. 
Now, you ought to say amen there. Yeah. That's a wonderful point. Yeah. Otherwise, most of us would have been stoned, and we would have already been burned. But it wasn't just him. It was his sons. It was his daughters. Yeah. It was his livestock. It was everything he had. Now, I'm picturing something like this happened. I'm picturing that, that what happened was that Achan went in. I mean, here they had this great battle. The walls of Jericho have come down flat. They go in. Every soldier has been instructed, don't you dare take anything. It's cursed. Don't take anything. Now, there's a reason why it was cursed. We found out now that more than likely, more than likely, the city of Jericho was filled up with venereal diseases. And God was saying, everything's cursed. And so don't take anything. But they went in, and here, here, is, here is Achan. And I believe that Achan did something. I believe that Achan somehow or another looked at all this good stuff and thought, well, it's free. Somehow or another Satan was there to tempt him and to whisper in his ear and say, go ahead and take it, go ahead and hide it, no one will know this. And he did. He took the Babylonian garment, which was defiled. He took the silver, which was defiled. And then he knew he was wrong because he didn't go showing everybody. He went and buried it up underneath his tent. And it cost him his life. It cost him his children's life. It cost him the life of everybody in his family. Now remember, God loves what? What does God love? Family. family. God loves the family. God loves good families. God loves wholesome families. God loves the family unit. God wants every single family unit to be stronger, to be tighter, to be closer. And I, and I want to share you this, something, this to you. There, there are families that we need. Everybody needs a, a family in heaven. We need a heavenly family. Everybody needs a church family. I can tell you this, over the past 33 years, my church family has stepped up for me. They have been there for me. They have helped me. They have prayed for me. They've helped me physically, helped me spiritually, helped me financially, helped me in every single way I can go. There's nothing like a church family you get in trouble. And there's nothing like blood family. Man, blood family, to have family. Now, now you can fight and feud with family. But in the end, in the end, when things get rough, when you get down, I want to tell you there's nothing like having family step forward. Now, now I have learned this through the years. Stay out of other people's family business. I've learned this. When a husband and wife is fighting, let them fight. If she comes complaining about him, let her complain. If he complains about her, let her complain. But don't you dare jump on the bandwagon because pretty soon they're going to get back together. You're going to be the bad guy. You understand what I'm telling you? Jesus knew that. Stay out of their business. Now, what God wants is God wants families to be strong. I want to show you something this morning, if I could. But Brother David, can you, can you come here, brother? Now, I want you to do something. You have four nails here. Can everybody see these two by fours? Brother David, I want you to drive one there and one here. Just drive. Matter of fact, you already got holes on your side. Just, just one there and one there. Can everybody see him driving these nails? Don't hit your thumb in church, please. There you go. One more. Praise the Lord. Look at that. Man, driving nails. Uh-huh. It's a hammer claw. Thank you, Brother Dayton. Brother Joshua, could you come? Joseph, could you come? Do this. Did I call you Joshua? You did. That's okay. Joshua, Joseph, we're in the book of Joshua. Don't hit your thumb. That make I don't know. I could use it for a good example if you hit that thumb, brother. I think that's going to be enough. That'll that'll hold it. I think that'll hold it. That, now wait a minute, brother Joseph. Is is that together pretty good? Can you see if you can tear that apart? That's in there. That's in there. It ain't coming apart. No, that's not coming. Okay. Not right here. Amen. So there there there's that nail. Did y'all see that? Look at that, brother David. You think you can pull that apart with your hands? Maybe. Now, I, I, let's have a contest. Miss Jeannie, let's see if you can pull this apart. I'm kidding. No, miss, don't do that. Do you, do you see that? This is what God does in the home. This is what, what God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Now, that's a warning. Let no man put asunder. In other words, it means this. Don't tear it apart. Don't you dare try to tear that apart. So what I'm supposed to do, I'm not supposed to try to tear you apart. That's not my job. Nobody. God said, it's a, great, it's a horrible thing you start trying to tear them apart. Look at this young family over here. 
Look, little prophet Ezra. That's what I call him. That's what me and Miss Tina call him, prophet Ezra. Look, look at it. What God wants is them strongly together. Now, now what God wants is, 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 is God wants Mr. Mr. Joseph loving Miss Julia and, and, and Mr. Ezra in between and Aiden in there. He wants it strong. God wants Mr. Barrett and Mr. Brantley and Miss Anna and Mr. David. God wants them together strong. And, and God wants it to stay together. But I need you to understand something. Over time, these boards began to dry out. They began to weather. They began to loosen. Now here's what Satan's going to do your whole life. Your whole entire life. This is what he's going to do. Right now, you may not understand what's going on in, in our world. You may not understand why, 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 why the big movement. Why, why the movement to tear down the gender wall? I, I mean, you look, I, I went the other day to buy, to, to, to buy I, I think it was a gun. And they had on there, are you male, are you female, or are you other? Other. Now I'm thinking, why is that? i tell you why. They don't want there to be a male. They don't want there to be a female. They don't want there to be the family unit. Why? Everything that God has made. Everything. Because this is what God made. They want to tear down. To, for, for, for a male to say I'm not a male anymore is to spit in the face of God and say, God, you made a mistake. For a female to want to be a, a, a male is to say, God, you made a mistake. Everything's against God. Yeah. We're going to tear down. Once you tear that down, you have tore down the family unit. And God loves what? I'm trying to brainwash you here. Do you gather that? So God loves families. He wants strong families. He made the family. He wants husbands loving wives and wives loving husbands, and he wants the children to see them. Now, so your whole life, what he's trying to do is tear this apart, tear this apart, and tear this apart. Right. Now, what happens is over time, we dry out and get cracked. Some of us have dried out more than others. We dry out. And so what happens is your whole entire life, have you ever seen two boards you've nailed together years ago and you walk out there and now, now they're not real tight anymore? I want you to notice this. Now, now I, I saw, I, I saw Brother David. I saw Brother Joseph. I saw them nail them together. They seem pretty strong. Matter of fact, we, we could probably put that on some posts, um, put a come along on it. It'd be strong enough. You could pull an engine out of a car, pick up a transmission. I would say that if we hung that up, Paul Gilly could get on it and hang on it, and it would not break. I'm telling you, I believe it would. Now, I want you to notice this. Along comes, along comes someone one day, and they're going to look at that. Now, come on up here, Brother Paul, since I used you. Come on up here. You're going to be the devil. So, so here, here comes Brother Paul, and Brother Paul comes along. The thing about it is, Brother Paul is bigger. Brother Paul is stronger. And Brother Paul has a bigger hammer than you had. But, but Paul, I want you to take that little thing and put it down there, and I want you to tear that apart from me if you would. Now look here, I got any kind of tool. You, you see how, I, anything you want. You, 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 you see that? He can bust that up. But if he needs a crowbar, we, we got a crowbar. We, we can bust that up. Tear it apart from me, brother Paul. I just want to see. Would you watch this? Uh oh! Uh oh! She coming apart! Oh! That didn't take long, did it? Would you, would you bend them down so I, I know I'm going to step on them, Brother Paul? That didn't, that, I, I want it to take longer. You should have got somebody else. So anyhow, here is what Satan does. I did not. No, three was enough. Here is what Satan does literally with these boards. Thank you, Brother Paul. When the family is together, he is never going to stop. All he has to do, he does not have to tear it apart. You understand all he has to do is put a wedge in there. That's right. Just some outsider, and this is what he does, just some outsider to wedge. Just a wedge between you and your wife. That's it. And it could be anything. You, you realize it could be anybody. It, 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 do, it do, do, doesn't have to be some member of the Bikini Swiss team. It, it, do, it doesn't have to be some, some man. You, you understand it could be money. It could be anything. It, it could be pride. It, it could be anything there is. All he's looking for is some place 
where he can take a wedge to fit it in between. All he, that's all he's got. Get the wedge. Did you see how easy he got that off? Yep. Now, it was nailed. These men nailed it. All he had to do was wedge it. For the rest of this family's life, Satan's going to do everything he can to wedge right in between you. And, and, you, and, and look, I have been there. I have felt the wedge. The rest of your life, Miss Hannah, he wants these boys. He wants to wedge between you. Something to come in between you. I, boy, I'm thankful God gave me a mom and daddy like he did. Now, uh, so, sometimes I thought daddy, da daddy wasn't mean to us. You have to understand that. He was just firm and he was harsh. He would throw you through a door or through a window. We, he, we always thought death was imminent around the corner. He, he's got old and, and, and he's, he, he's sweetened up like wine. Uh, and uh, you don't understand the man I knew when I was growing up that worked shift work. And, and so we tiptoed around daddy. We tiptoed around daddy. We was terrified of our daddy. But one thing we never questioned, we never questioned whether daddy loved mama. Never. We always knew daddy loved mama. And mama loved daddy. We, not one time if mama ever said no, not one time did we ever go to daddy and say, now mama said no, but, no sir, you know why? That would have been a wedge, Woodrow wouldn't have had it. We didn't do it the other way, no sir, that would have been a wedge. Your whole life, Satan's trying to tear down your family. He's trying to wedge, now, now listen, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't rest. He is relentlessly doing everything he can to tear your family apart. The goal is not just you and your children. The goal is your grandchildren. I look at little Annalene and little old Jackson. Where is Jackson this morning? Oh, he's down there. I, I look at them and, I, and I'm, I'm thinking, man, here he is. Already I know what Satan's doing. He is doing his best to get to their generation. So what's going on today in our society? Why, why the big binary move? Why, why the transgender move? Why is all that? The goal has always been the family. Tear apart the family. Tear apart the masculinity of the male. Tear apart the, uh, the, the uh, feminine side of, of the women. Tear apart the home. You tear apart the church. You tear apart the church. You attack the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he's trying to do is to wedge between us. Now the whole goal here is don't let him wedge. Don't let him wedge. Now, now how do we keep from him putting the wedge in us? How do we keep? Okay, look here. I got three more names. So I'm going to give you an example here. So here is what happens. You have this board here. This is you. This is your wife. This is your family. This could be your walk with God. Anything. And so here you are. And you said, I, I what when you got married? Did you really say that? I don't think you realized what came with it when you said it, did you? Who said that? So, so here you are. Over time, this thing begins to weaken. It begins to crack. It begins to loosen. And it begins to lose its strength. Now I can tell you this, you can go to all the marriage seminars you want to, all the books you want to read, you can read them, you can go to all the counselors you want to go to, anything you want to go to, but there's only one thing going to make this thing stronger. But it's got to have the hammer come back on it. You understand that? When you get around the Word of God and, and the man of God begins to preach, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, you know what that does? That, that, puts, a, that puts a nail, the Bible says, in a sure place. When you get around a family altar and you began to read the Word of God, you began to pray. I've been wanting to do this for years. And you began to pray. You know what that does around that old family altar? It does something. It begins to put a nail in a sure place. It begins to tighten it. Am I getting on anybody's nerves yet? And so here you are. It begins to tighten and it begins to tighten and it begins to tighten and it begins to tighten. Every single board, every single relationship that you have your relationship with your children, your relationship with God, your wife, your husband, it has to constantly, constantly, constantly be tightened up, nailed back together because the world is constantly, constantly, yeah. constantly trying to tear it apart. Yeah, you're right. Now just stop and think about this for just a minute. Just stop and think how many times Satan has done what he can to tear your family apart. 
to tear your ministry apart. To take your children away from you. Let me just stop and think. Come on, ladies. How many times have you whispered this? I'm not about to, I'm not about to submit to some man. Oh, I don't care what the Bible says. Oh, come on, you may not say it out loud, but you're thinking it. I, I know what the Bible says, and then you throw this little word in there. What's that word? But. 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 And then, and then here you are. Now you, you got this. You, you got something. Come on, gentlemen. You got something you really want. It's a new set of wheels. It's a new gun. It's a new tractor. You know, it's something you don't have to have it. You just want it. But she wants something also. I told Brother Allen, Brother Allen here a few years ago, went to go buy him a new gun, nice gun. I coveted it. I saw it. I coveted it. I just didn't take it. And I said, boy, that thing, that thing's going to cost you a lot of money. He said, oh, no, I already paid for it. I said, oh, no, that thing's going to cost you a lot of money. Oh, no, I, I paid for it, Brother. And I said, what it costs? He told me what it costs. And I said, well, you can double that because you've got to go find that much money and spend it on your wife, something she wants now. He said, what? I said, oh, that's part of being married, brother. What? I said, that's just part of being married. You got you something, now she's got to get her something. Come on, ladies, isn't that fair? I think that's, I think that's fair. It's expensive. Hey, when you walk down the aisle and you said, I do. But it wasn't just I will, it was I do. And I learned that real quick. Man, if, if I'm going to get me something, if she wants something, and, and it goes two ways. Now, my thing is this. Everything that's going on in our life, Satan is doing his best to tear it apart. What you have to do is make sure he doesn't tear it apart. In, in, er, in every area of life, don't you let him wedge because he's wedging. And you have to watch out for the wedges. Because here's what, here's what happened. Some old friend from your past comes up. They begin to wedge. Don't, no, nope, that's got to go. When me and Miss Tina got married, we were, we were married young. Very, very young. She was three and I was four. <laughs> we weren't far from it, I'm kidding. We were very young. I remember people telling us we were in high school. I remember people coming to me saying it will never last. This will not work. I remember my senior, my senior teacher telling me, it's not going to work. You just mark her down. This is not going to last very long. He's dead. I'm still married. <laughs> by, the, by, the, by the grace of God. And it would not have lasted because there have been a thousand wedges come along. I want you to know we had help. Number one, we've had a church family to help us. Number two, we've had good friends that's helped us. Number three, we've had good family that's helped us. We have had help. You understand that? We, we're not prideful in that area. We have needed help, and we've took help, and I thank God that we've had help. I get to play with my grandbabies today because we have we had help. And, and you, you, don't, you don't refuse help. So when you've messed up, when you've messed up, and you will mess up, then what you, re, what you want to do is before the boards fly apart, the way Brother Paul flew them apart, you want them nailed back together. And ever how many nails that it takes, and every, whatever sacrifice that it takes to get them nailed back together, you make that sacrifice, you get the nails there, and you let God put the nails back together. Remember, whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. He didn't say man couldn't put asunder. He said don't let man put it asunder. I want to tell you, man can tear apart just about anything that's put together. When you look, man, mankind is destructive. Right now, our own country, our own government is now doing everything it possibly can to destroy the family. I, I said it was going to happen. Now, you listen to me. We are moving toward, quickly toward, a global system. A global system where there's no men, there's no women, and there's no races. A global system where you're just a person but you don't know what kind of person you are. Now, we are, we are bizarre. And I made this statement back years ago. I said, what's going to happen is when same-sex marriage came in, when they legalized it on the federal level, I said, what's going to happen now, everything's going to be legalized. And already, already there's been a push before con Congress to legalize ped pedophiles. Look it up. 
to legalize it. You see, it, it doesn't stop. Once you open that, once you tear something apart that God put together, once you tear apart those boundaries, it does not end. And so where we're at today, we are in a whirlpool, this big whirlpool that is reaching out and grabbing every board it can and ripping every household that it can apart. One thing that you're going to need, you're going to need daily time in the Word of God as a family. A family needs to pray together. A family needs to worship together. A, a family needs to serve God together. And right now, as the days approach, as, as we see things come, and they are flying apart, you need to remember this. Right now, church is more important than anything else you have on this world. It is. And, and it's going to come down to it. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Have you seen the food shortage coming? Do you see the food shortage? So everybody said it's coming. Before Biden never went in, everybody said we're going to have a food shortage. So now we went to BJ's yesterday. You know, what, you, know, you know what's missing on the shelves? Food. Went to Sam's. You know what's not there? Not stocked up food. You know what? Went, went, to, went to Walmart. You know what's not there? Food is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Now they're blaming this on, they're blaming this on Putin. It's not, it's not Mr. Putin. No. Th these guys are in bed with each other. You need to remember that. This thing, this thing has been coming, been told it was coming ahead of time. So what are they planning on doing? What they're planning on doing is tearing apart everything that there is about God. Everything. Now you mark her down. The whole thing is in a plan. When, when the woke movement started, I got on this Wednesday night. When the woke movement started, what happened with the woke movement, you know what's ebonics for, for you, you've awoke, you woke up. And your eyes are your your eyes are open, and, and it's the most ridiculous thing there is. But but when it started, everything was geared against God. We're going to tear down the statues of godly men. We're going to take the names down off the streets of godly men. Everything was coming apart. They're tearing apart system by system by system everything that represents God and everything that stands for God. And they're doing it in the name of of, of some ridiculous thing that happened over 200 years ago. Now, now, now what's happening is, is, is the goal is to get us so broke down that we'll do anything they say and we'll take anything they have. So what do we need to do? What we need to do is to make sure our boards are tight together. How do we do that? We do that by walking with God. We do that with time and the Word of God. We do that through daily prayer. We do that with family altars. We do that with family Bible reading. We do that with family prayer. We do that by, by, by serving God, being in church, being involved in the things of God as much as we possibly can. Because if we let him, if we let him, he will tear every board apart that we have ever had nailed together. Every single one. Now you have to make up your mind right now, Grace Valley. Am I going to let him do that? How many times have one of you ladies said this to your husband? I'm not about to let them come in between me and you. Can I see anybody's hand if you ever said that to your husband? I see one that's honest. Just one. I see two. Honest. I see three that's honest. Can I have four? Is there a fourth honest? I see four. There's four that's honest. Okay. If Miss Tina was here, she'd be going, me, 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 me. <laughs> That'd be her. Her hands would be up like this. Yeah, I hear that all the time. You don't let your children come between you. You don't let the grandchildren come between you. You don't let other family members come between you. The husband and the wife must stay together because Satan's going to do everything he can to tear them apart. And if he tears you apart, more than likely he tears your next generation apart, and he tears the next generation apart, and he tears the next generation apart, and he tears the next generation apart, the next generation apart until there's nothing left. So what do we do? What do we do, people? Well, we walk with God as close as we can. Let the Word of God govern us. Me and Miss Tina got married, as I said, we were very young. I had a very close friend of mine. He was my best friend. And I would come home from work, and he would be there at my house. You got to understand, we grew up, we grew up together. We were best friends. But something 
that Woodrow had put in my brain came to me. And one day I came by and we stepped out in the yard and I looked at him and I said this. I said, you know, we're good friends, but I don't think it's good for you to be at my house when I'm not home. Now that broke his heart. That broke his heart and I lost my best friend. I lost him. It hurt his feelings so bad. But it's 42 years later, I still have my wife. He's had three or four. I look back, I think the call was right. There are some calls I did not make that I wish I would have made. There were times that Satan was driving a wedge between the board and I could not see it. Had it not been for God, had it not been for God, not only would our boards have been torn apart, they would have been cut up, they would have been burned, they would have been destroyed. There would have been nothing left. I'm so glad that God has stepped in. When you see the wedge coming, stop the wedge. You stop the wedge. Because the most important thing for me and the most important thing for you is that those boards stay tightly nailed together. Does everybody understand? Everybody say amen. amen. Let's stand up. We will have a song. What a great day. One more song. <laughs> One more song, my friend. Let's just sing, Oh, What a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. It's mine. And to the uttermost. Okay. All right. Hey, I, I appreciate our family letting me Amen. use them for examples and driving nails for us during service. Uh, it's been a good day in the Lord. Amen. We, we, we trying to start back John in Romans at 5 o'clock. We go from 5 to 6. Uh, I think mostly tonight we need staplers, people who staple. And so we'll meet about 5 o'clock if you can come and, uh, and we will staple the Word of God together. Okay, have revival starting April the 10th, Sunday morning. Man, I hope, I hope you make plans to come. I believe we're going to have a great revival. I believe we're going to have a great revival this year. All right, anything before we close this morning? All right, make sure you greet our visitors. We have folks been here uh, their first time, and so make sure you greet them. Let them know you're glad they came.